Five minutes into the game, I touched the ball, monkey chance. So I'm like, oh shit. It's real, man. This is definitive. It's monkey chance. Then I remember when it just got real. Chance. Zigga, zigga, zigga. Shoot. What? Zigga, zigga, zigga. Shoot the f. Wheel it, though. the chance, yeah. You're done. What? I said, wheel it. That's the original, though. Man said, man said, wheel it. That is not nice. You can't save, man. Is it recording? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, I'm no, no. Oh, oh, yeah, we just cut it out. Um, I was going to ask you about the documentary, but before that, I read up that it said that your time at Doncaster changed your life or your career. I don't know if that's true or not. No, uh, it was or, or my that's, time or that's in Lithuania. 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 Okay. It was a time in Lithuania. Yeah, yeah bomb, yeah, bomb. Racism. That's yeah. That, but you know, Wikipedia, you know Wikipedia says that about Doncaster, you know that, right? So, Is it? Yeah, yeah. Look, look, I, like, it says here, um, one sec. I don't know if it's wrong, <laughs> but it says, um, I can a professional breakthrough came at Doncaster Rovers, having spent time up until then in lower leagues of English football, as well as spells in Lithuanian worlds. Following a short but successful time at Doncaster, I can a move to his seventh club, Torquay United. He proved to be a great a goal for it, but left the struggling team the following season to join Swansea City. After spending two seasons with the Welsh club, he joined League One side Millwall and later moved to Northampton Town. Akifema spent six years switching from Northampton to Gillingham, mm -hmm. where the goal-scoring abilities were still apparent. In June 2014, he signed for League Two AFC Wimbledon, and two years later, Wicca Wanderers, where he remained until his retirement. Yeah. Mm, yeah. To be fair, yeah. I, I guess if they wanted to say the, that was the outlook, yeah. in a sense where when... Doncaster was where I came into the football league. Okay. We scored and we got promoted. Okay. So that was where... You got a bit more spotlight. Yeah, mm -hmm. from that. So, But the, my defo defining moment, hands down, was um, when I went to Lithuania. So, of course, we, we spoke, was raised in Dorston, uh, went to Highbury Golf School, Metropolitan. And like anything, I was going trials and was getting rejected. And it was that, listen, you can play, but you're too big. Yeah, yeah. So, and I remember it always, it, you used to always just, Annoy you and disheartening Annoy me in the fact because I was thinking, bruv, I swear if you train all the time, you'll get fit. I think it was harder to be good at it. Yeah, yeah. So, and that was what was going on. But anyway, like, cut long story short, got the opportunity to go out to Lithuania where they said, look, we're going to pay you. Like, we're going to pay you to come out and play. Yeah. So I was like, oh, snap. Say nothing. And they, we didn't do banks or nothing. It was brown paper bags. Yeah, it was yeah. in them times, isn't it? So I didn't even contemplate that I wouldn't enjoy the food. You go yourself or your brothers? Yeah, I went by myself at this time. So I'm 18. Yeah, okay, so okay, he's okay. 14 and he would have been 21. Okay. Um, so yeah, I was like, nah, man, boom. And I, I remember growing up in the household, it was very much doctor, lawyer. Mm -hmm. You know, they went to university. And mum and dad, I was like, look, I have John Barnes. He's a little football player. That's what I want to be. I want to be a footballer. Yeah, yeah. So at 18, I was like, yeah, man. I wasn't, it wasn't happening here. Look, like, I'm going to pick up and go. So I, and I, I touch on it. It didn't cross my mind that I wouldn't speak the language. It didn't cross my mind that I wouldn't enjoy the food. And it didn't cross my mind that I'd be one of the only black players in the city of Clyperdor that I went, let alone I was the first black person in the league. So we're going back 22 years ago. Man. So no phones, yeah, is it? no nothing. It was just... Was it was no Instagram to see yeah, what's going on. Yeah. Were, they, were, they, were, they walk, were, were they welcoming over there? Was it racism? No, nah, man. Bro, bro, so, bro, that's the height. No, nah, but some, some, of the, some of the places, like when I go to Croatia, for example... Yeah, like, when you I, go to Croatia I, I, now. I, I, no, no, I'm saying, but I would assume... The reason we mad, but the people that haven't seen you, they're mad welcoming when they w see us. Like raw, they yeah, want they, they kind of want to get to know when, you. When, when was the first yes, time you experienced that? Um, maybe like 2016, 2017. So, so, so are you talking about 2002? Three. Yeah, yeah. I went. Yeah, Jarul days. Yeah, I went yeah, 2002. Yeah. So you got to look at it. What I think, and um, for me, I look at social media as a positive because I think it makes a, such a big world so much smaller yeah. so you're seeing a lot more things so 2016 that's what it is when in 2002 when I mean laptops first just came out you know MySpace was rolling you know okay. to, to phone home but I had to get calling cards yeah, yeah, yeah. so they hadn't seen for me black people in the flesh <clears throat> and you're big <clears throat> as well and I'm so it, it's, it's, it's mad because my first game where I knew where it hit home my first game, we played a friendly and the game kicked off and then boom, monkey chance, straight off. Damn. So I was like, nah, man. And I, I joke about it now. And I was like, nah, man, this ain't, 
I'm thinking about it. I'm 18. I was like, nah, man. Say, that, that can't be, man. It just must be sound effects. Yeah. So then I, I touched the ball. So five minutes into the game, I touched the ball, monkey chance. So I'm like, oh, shit. It's real, man. This is definitive. It's monkey chance. Then I remember when it just got real. Chance. Ziga, ziga, ziga. Shoot the fucking nigga. Ziga, yeah. ziga, ziga. Mm-hmm. Shoot the fucking nigga. Wheel it, These though. Are the yeah. You're done. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> I said wheel it. Wheel it, though. Man said... Man said wheel it. That is not nice. You can't say, man. I said, man. I said, I said bring that beat, bro. Wheel it. Wheel it. Mr. Money on the beat. Wait, hold on. He hit it. I was like, I asked him. Let me say, let me say. I'm going to tease this, bro. Nah, battery. So... <laughs> so this it started off like that and it started echoing so about a thousand people that's crazy you know ziga, ziga. so 500 of these fans were my own so 500 what? were away home fans I thought it was away fans fan. no, 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 so fan. 500 were my own Fuck. fans so they just all joined in yeah yeah so at half time man going right. so we get through so half time we get into the changing room and my team captain played in Poland so he's the only one that can speak English so I can't speak. I'm it's, I'm joking. Them we're doing a team talk. So my man's smitten. I can't understand. So at the end, I go, "Hey, but what do you say?" They said, "Yeah, pass the ball to you." I was like, "Cool." But I went to him. I went, "But what does Zigger mean?" He's like, "Boy, they just say Zigger to rhyme with nigger." I was like, "Oh they shit!" Just made up the word as well. Made up the word. <clears throat> so anyway, come out second half and start Zigger. Z- about ten minutes into the second half, I'm like, "Bun this, man! I'm coming off." So I come off a big roar from everybody, like a goal was scored when I'm walking off. So I call my brother. So I remember, <clears throat> remember it's like it was yesterday, it was 22 years ago. I remember I take the president's phone. I was like, I need to use the phone. So I call my brother. I'm like, yo, bro, I'm coming home. He's like, bro, why? Like, why are you coming home? I goes, listen, I start telling him what they're saying, they're being racist, right, And I remember him, he goes to me, listen, B, bruv, I won't tell you to stay anywhere that you don't want to stay, but if you come home, they win. So, boom, like, if this was a film, music would play and yeah, feel yeah, like, yeah. Oh. I was like, fuck that, they've Rocky won. Music. That's what I'm saying. Literally, I said, fuck that, they've won. But then like, I always say this. I remember sleeping that night and I woke up, call it Defined Intervention, like, and something in me was like, nah, man, ain't nobody running me out of anywhere. Mm. And then, boom, and this is what I keep saying, but I've been, I, and I use this for, like, the synopsis for my life. But it don't matter what anybody else says. It don't, matter, it don't matter how many times they say no. When God says yes, it's your time. It's your time. Yeah. So I remember going through that season, scoring goals, getting to equivalent to what was the FA Cup, the Lithuanian Cup. I scored the only goal. We won 1-0. We won the cup back. <coughs> Went back to Clyde It was the first time where I started feeling <clears throat> about um, celebrity status. Big scissors, opened up the Adidas store. Met oh, the cl- mayor of Clypador, didn't pay for food, didn't pay for... So literally, right at that moment there, I was like, yo, man can overcome. And that ignorance is bliss. Yeah, so I was yeah. still getting racism from away fans, but my fans they started giving me nicknames yeah, yeah, yeah. and they started riding with me. And then when I came back here and I, and I look at it now and I look back at it and I think sometimes when you go through your darkest moments it sets you up for what you need to go through later on. It makes you stronger as well. 100%. So when I, mean, I got that... back here and they were saying, oh, I can film when your tits are just offside. I was like, there was... Do you know what they were saying over there? They were saying, over there, So, you know, so yeah. literally, yeah. that's what it is. And I always come back to this, you know, being a product of your experiences and product of your environments yeah, yeah. and what the man I am meant to be. So I kid you not, I wouldn't change nothing in my journey. Mm. You understand what I'm saying? Even, like I said, to the moment when I got broke, I remember breaking my leg, surgeon saying, rah, man, you ain't gonna be. Able to, you may not play again, and I, I didn't have a club. Burnt through the savings. Was paying both mortgages on my house. I was like, raw. My daughter was born, so I was like, nah, man. Listen, I gotta get back in the game. So the right leg's shorter than so everybody sees me with a little bop at the moment. Got a big ass scar on there, and that's just because now one leg's shorter than the other. But that mindset of nah, man. Look, 
I ain't out here to prove nobody wrong. I'm out here to prove myself right. Mm. And then I to like be able saying, to go man. and play. That's another, that's message. Another, that's another yeah, one, isn't it? I like that saying, man. That's another message. one still. Yeah, yeah, so, part two. No, that's fine. Right. That's in the doc. So listen, the that's all in the documentary. Yeah, the documentary. Yeah, where, yeah, where is it? Where is it? Amazon. 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 I, I'm going to watch that tonight. So yeah. Yeah. You take the documentary and say, hit me up. When you say it, like, for me, you know what? I want to resonate. It resonates. It resonates family. It resonates that, you know what? I've never had to be able to do anything by myself. Mm. Good, bad, or indifferent. My brothers have been there, like, yeah. since day dot. Um, but then also, for me, what I want to jump off the page is that to be comfortable in your own skin. Yeah. I, honestly, I didn't set out to be 17 stones. I didn't set out to love chicken. I didn't set out to love banging gym. I literally set out to be the best version of myself. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's what I continue to try and strive to do today. Every day is a learning day. You know what I'm saying? So that's when they take the documentary and it's just that, it's that what's, mindset. What's the, what's the name of the documentary? Beast, Beast Mode on. on. Beast Mode? Beast okay. Mode On, yeah. Okay, cool. Also, so in terms of the documentary, why was, like, who came up with the concept? Did someone come to you? Did you think of the concept? Why Why did you say now is the time for documentary? Because I know some people, they do books. Whatever, you're like, no, I want a documentary. Yeah, I've done a book as well. I'm an author, cuz. I ain't gonna lie, I'm an author. Like, I, like, I ain't trying to toot my own horn, but toot, toot. Toot it, bro! Talk your shit, B! Man, I'm that Ziga. Say less, but you know what the baddest thing is, man? So I was approached to do the documentary. So they was like, look, am I gonna retire? I said, yeah, you know what? I'm going to retire at, uh, my last year would be, I would have retired when we got relegated from the champ. Um, and it, listen, it's all in the dock, but that was the COVID year. So we played the whole season in the champ where there was no fans. Yeah, yeah, it was yeah. like, look. I'm going to ask I, you about that actually. I started my career with fans. I want to end, end it with fans. fans yeah, yeah, yeah. So then they approached and said, look, we want to kind of tell your story. Do you want to tell your story? I goes, yeah. Because one thing I thought was good was the fact that I always said that I would acknowledge my accomplishments or my achievements when I finish. Yeah, yeah. So whenever I hit landmarks, like played over 600 games, scored over 200 goals. So when they were talking about that, I was like, look, I'm, I'm in it, I'm doing it. Like, but when I, when I finish, of course, I will take note. So it was nice in the fact of being able to go through this documentary and talk about my accomplishments, yeah, about yeah, the give journey, yourself your flowers about the and process, that. yeah. Mm. So to go through it, only thing that was hard was trying to fit 40 years in 90 minutes. That was it. So yeah. there's, I'm talking about things in a documentary, like it was a moment, but it was actually a significant moment in my life. Yeah, but you can't, you literally, are, every aspect of my life, I could have done a, a documentary yeah, yeah, yeah. about. Yeah. Even Lithuania. Yeah. yeah, so yeah. that right there, like there, there's, a, there's, there's a bit in it, but... It's not fully. It's no. not fully. So even like when I talk about it, like I, I always give like the PG, yeah, like yeah, the, the PG yeah. sides, and like I bun it up when there was so many. Bro, I even come to buck him. Like yeah, yeah. This I, even, I came out there as well. And I'm, I'm walking around. I remember we went to the shop and that, and like a, I, I don't know where if it was a bus or a double deck. Like the kids are just there, just giving man the finger and shit. Mm -hmm. Must have walked into the supermarket and some little girl must have run up to us. And she done the Hitler sign. She said white power and shit. And I'm like, look at my brother, what the fuck is this? At that age, and you know. At, bro. That, and I told I'm you like, my cousin. Yeah. And I, was, I just analyzed it. I'm like, bruv, like, you're really on this football thing. Like, you. Because yeah. you, you have to want to be care. there. Yeah. But, but not the, the, like, the, the, you, you know this is not some shit that, where you're like, I'm here because I have, I actually have to want to be here. Yeah. To mm. Enjoy. But, but, yeah. but you know the saddest thing is that. It literally comes full circle to the point, right? So that was one of them ones where it was a means to an end. I, I basically, but I had to go through that process. So I had to go up knowing that shit on an away day, but they're going to be saying, Ziga, 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 shoot the fucking nigga. Like I had to go through that process. But for me, it was, but I want to be a footballer. How did it all, how did it all know the same chant though? Well, they had a telegram they or something. What? They practiced. They One person Remember, it's not a chance. No, but no, 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 Get, you just hear it, though. No, you just, to, to the you other fans. So you know, just you would never want to start at the end word first and work backwards. Yeah. No, no. So yeah. you <laughs> never. So you think about it. I only really changed my fans' 
halfway through the season. Okay. Mm. So them man would have man, that you even you see it now, and that, I, I, I've spoke about it. But that same racist chance, but England players would have got that yeah, of, yeah, on yeah. social media twenty mm. years later. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what, what what I'm saying is, you don't change a racist overnight. So even my fans that were joining in, they're still um, racist. Bro. They would have still been racist, they and they still would have done the chant, and mm. it would have literally. And football fans speak, so but they were in a pub prior to say pub wherever they were, and it literally, and it was just that, it was just the song. That's that, like the Chelsea. That's like the Chelsea. Ten people know it. hundred people that's know like the Chelsea, it. That's like the Chelsea fans when they um, I can't remember what where it was. I think it was Paris, and then they were racist to the woman on the train, the black woman on the train. But the same Chelsea team had um, drug bar. Uh, Kalu, yeah. Maluda, mm -hmm. May, I think Makalele was around them days. I don't know if Nogget right. was around. It's like, but this is like, you're being racist, but the players in your team are black, but then they, they got this mentality where you're all right, though. Yeah. You're, 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 you're all the right like black. You're, 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 you're not, not like, like them black. No, 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 you're not like them. You're serving a purpose. A purpose. Mm. So because you're serving a purpose. The minute you fuck up, that, as you're a nigga too. As soon as you come out, so, and this is where, of course, they bring it back and they say, look, how do we change racism in football but racism is a society problem so it's the same people that are racist in society yeah, come yeah. to football games yeah, 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 so yeah. we have to try and stem it out in society yeah, yeah, yeah. which football. you already know is a problem but of course they're trying to make steps and we've got to have conversations and I think this is what I'm saying with social media in the sense where you're seeing it a lot more yeah. so you can't put it under the carpet it's now in your face yeah. so sometimes they have to take a look at themselves um but yeah, man, it's it's that sort of thing. Once you don't serve a purpose, it's... Uh, but it shows you how much people that, love crazy. football. People love football so much, yeah? Where they're like, you know what? We'll let these monkeys play because we need to win. It's mad when you think about it. It's the minute it's these monkeys make, are not make performing... It, make the money as well. Man. The minute these monkeys another, ain't performing, mm -hmm. we have to remind them they're monkeys. But that's another thing as well. But as long as you're performing, you know what I mean? We're not going to say nothing because we need this monkey performing at his best. So don't be saying none of that weird no, shit. But, but my you know what I mean? Don't throw him off his game. Yeah, but don't my, throw this monkey off his game. Yeah, yeah. But my thing is this here. But as you said, if you're making them money, they can overlook it. As in, it's not that bad. You can't date my daughter, though. You can play for my no, team, No, but the though. if you think the you fans... There's, the a, lot, there's, a, lot, a, there's a lot of that. Where it's selective. Certain, certain the fans don't care about yeah. the money. One sec, one sec, a lot of people will be like, yo, it's cool. But then you realise what people think about you when you're around anyone they love or anything they value. You're okay over there. Nah, you're serving your purpose. But the moment your daughter maybe talks to man, what brings a black man home? You're crazy. What's going on here? Nah, nah, get him out. Or the moment they feel like you're overstepping your mark or maybe you come into a restaurant they're in or you start to impose on their lifestyle or even like the area. I don't know if you've seen the thing in the 70s where like black people move into certain areas, like white areas, and then you, ha you saw like white kids come up to the black kids saying, what, what are you doing around here? You're not allowed around here. Yeah, he, um, and it's proper, like, it's they're proper bullying them, like, grabbing that? them up, like. I was going to say, off the back of that, yeah, there's a, um, you've seen Bashi's, um, the late, the last thing that he shot. Like oh. the horror thing. Yeah, that, that's basically what it was. Like, mm. it was a black yeah, family moving to a white neighbourhood. Oh. Yeah, yeah. I think it's, oh, I think yeah, it's called yeah. Them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Is that in or the shop? When it was in the shop? No, no, it, I don't know. It's, 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 like, like, it's like shot in the no, 60s. It's on, it's on Amazon. Like 50s, 60s. Yeah, it's on Amazon. Yeah. It was, it was, it was, it's very intense, you know. Like, mm -hmm. when, the, the racist scenes, yeah, there's a scene where, like, um, the one of the white guys tries to come and bash his property. The look bash he gave him, because he was fixing something on the roof. The look he gave, man, yeah. I was like, nah, you know, I'm gonna leave you. I'm gonna leave mm. you alone today. <laughs> I said, like, yeah, but Bashi acts very well in it, very, oh, very well in it. That's Six real though. good. Mm. Real good I was gonna, so I'm gonna, I'm not moving the subject again, but like you, you touched on a point before. Let me just round up. Yeah. Um, you said that you played in stadiums with no fans. Yeah. So I remember like that was weird for fans watching because. You could hear every instruction. You heard the bench. Yes. You heard, it was just a weird, normally football, you don't hear nothing. Yeah. You just see the game. Yeah. You might see when there's a close up, you can read a lip or whatever. But that time was like, you could hear a coach saying, yes, yes, man, no, man, no, man. left, 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 pass. It, just, it was like a weird time. It was like, it's like you're watching a training game. Yeah, yeah. It wasn't like a real game. Like Do you know what? For me, it was a weird time, period. It was unprecedented. It was unfought. If we say it now, you know what, next week, bruv, the world's gonna stop. You would be like, oh, yeah, you were like, yeah, 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 yeah. Literally, that's what it was, and it's crazy because, and I'm not condoning how the, the fans move and that, but it showed how, how important they big are. the fans are and yeah, how important yeah. and how they are the soul of football and the energy they bring. So in that. they literally, you 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 feel it. So when they're not there, this it, 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 it'd be it's kind of like playing football with a tennis ball. 
Like you would yeah. just, you would, you you would feel the difference. Was it hard know? to perform? As in, um, like to your level? As in, like yeah, or... like yeah, but it was in the sense where it was the the energy. It's like the, the best way I'd say is when you lot do your podcast in front of people, yeah, you yeah. feel an energy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. but when you do it by yourselves, you still do it. It's a different but energy. It's a different energy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's what it was. So in a sense, it's not like say it's hard to perform, but you go a little bit more mm -hmm. because the energy give you, or you feel the tenseness in the air yeah, yeah, because yeah. of, or you feel the excitement. So that's what was lacking. It was lacking of because you was on your own energy. And sometimes you need the crowd to make you run further. Yeah, yeah. Or, you know, to give you a bit more or energy. to give you yeah, that yeah, little yeah. bit of feistiness. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's what it messed. Um, but for myself, it was actually, it, it actually turned out to be a euphoric moment because anybody that knows me, I find it hard to slow my mind down. So my mind's constantly on the go. Yeah. But when the world stopped, it forced you to stop. Yeah, it gave everyone so, a, re you know a reset. Saying? And it literally, I'm, I remember just being with my kids and it was just that. It was all about the kids. And then we got, to the we the, it opened up and we got to the playoff final. Well, we got to the playoff final, and it was the most <clears throat> excuse me, it was the most weirdest feeling because we got promoted, um, and there was no fans to be able to. And it was the first time where we well, it was for myself anyway. Whereas we got promoted and there was no fans. Yeah. There was yeah. no family there. There was no. But the flip side of it was. So like you said about the subs, we was our own cheerleaders. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So whenever there was a tackle, we would scream. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whenever there was a goal, we would scream. Yeah. And when we got promoted, it was a weird feeling because we celebrated with each other. Un, it was, it, it was unmessed up. It was literally it's like pure. It's like a pure. Yeah, yeah, it was yeah, us yeah, in this yeah. room knowing that we achieved. I wasn't going off to see my kids or celebrating my parents or. Literally, the boys were together, and it was such a unique yeah. experience. Um, but of course, like playing without the fans, it was weird, you know. Mm. Everybody that season, I think everybody just kind of nah, it was, uh, it was, it off, was, it was of. a bit off season, and then when the fans came back, it was just it was something special. I remember, I, it was, I don't know what game it was that you actually they were interviewing, uh, interviewing you after the game, and it was like you were on the pitch. But I don't, I don't remember it being a promotion because I'm sure there were fans there. Oh, that was yeah, that was, was that a cup final or something? No, that was the first one. So that was the first one. So there was, there's two infamous um, interviews. Interviews I gave. So the first one was when I was at Wimbledon and we got promoted to League One, but I was told that I was already released, so they wasn't going to give me a contract. So I remember I, I scored the penalty at Wembley. So they interviewed me um, on the pitch, and that was when I was like, well, look. Technically, I'm unemployed. So if anybody out there is looking for a striker, hit me up on WhatsApp. So then that went triple viral. And I should have done that years ago because how many people that was getting in my DMs yeah, and enormous. offering me um, like, like contracts, and contracts travel, like, yeah, and yeah, that yeah, was Mexico, Brazil, Greece, Australia. Um, but then ended up going with um, with Wickham, which was the best. Yeah, 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 ended yeah. up getting to the championship at the age of 39 and then gave another interview afterwards and that's when they said it, it was like a sermon um, and then I said look you know what the only person that can hit me up on WhatsApp this time is Klopp and when I got back to my phone Klopp had sent me that's the one a that's message that's, that's sick, he had you know. sent me a message which again like look I won't even lie in my career I've been humbled many times yeah, yeah. things have happened which is mind boggling which look I would say my status outside football sometimes is superseded. Even the FIFA what team. I've done. Mm -hmm. uh, football. Oh, I mean, no, that's FIFA. Sick. FIFA team. Strongest, was, strongest was, player on FIFA, innit? There yeah, was, there was, there was uh, another entity. So we're talking about JJ, also known as KSI, the YouTuber. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So he done a video of me and put me to a demographic which I would have never have gone to. I felt when YouTube came out, it was a young people's tool, yeah, yeah. and he did a video and pff, it just. Just it took me into another place, and then FIFA. So that community, oh, in a sense, that took me into another stratosphere. The whole being, uh, being strongest, and I say for myself, I was very proud of that because I really enjoyed the gym. So when you get validation and recognition yeah, yeah, yeah. for something you do 
in the off season. And I said it, I went out there and I was like, look, there's going to be nobody stronger than me. And there was nobody stronger than me. I think there was one time there was a glitch mm-hmm. in the Matrix no <laughs> and they gave it to some, I think Hala, which it was nonsense because <laughs> you know them ones. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so to be able to retire at the age of 40 as well, being the strongest, getting my end of era card, still now, man. Like, I'm the coolest dad to my son. Like, my daughter don't rate me anyway, but I'm the, cool, I'm the coolest. She'll rate you later. Well, yeah, yeah, say now, when she gets of age, she'll start mm, clocking anyway. Mm. Saying that, because she ain't dating until she's 31 anyway. So, <laughs> <laughs> that is what it is on them ones. So, yeah, yeah man. So, listen, that, look, all that, to be fair, is in the documentary. Um, um, we are proud of the documentary, because, like I said, what's nice was that it, was, it allowed us to sit back and reflect yeah, and yeah, put it yeah, in... Yeah kind of one place, even though it was condensed, to put in one place and to be able to kind of see, well, wow, you know what? Somebody who doesn't fit the mold or doesn't fit the perception of what people think can still forge out something for him and be comfortable in his own skin. So that's what I want individuals to come. So if you're short and you want to go be a basketball player, I've got to be a basketball player. But if you're raising Hackney and you want to go be a politician, go be a politician. Mm. Just because people say you can't don't mean you won't. You understand mm. what I'm saying? Mm. So that's what I want people to gravitate to still. Even for your kids or, and family yeah. members, like that is a f- it's documented. Your career is documented. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. even later on, even when you're like AE, you got grandkids or whatever. You they can, can be watch like, that. That's like, yeah. this is granddad, you know? And then after <laughs> you've gone... It will live Still after you, like, yeah. do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, yeah, and people yeah, yeah. will legacy. know, do you know what I'm saying? You've yeah. left a legacy That's behind. what, to be fair, and it's, and, and we talk this, and I think we all have a due diligence, and I say this with y'all, because y'all influence. I'll be watching y'all shit, like, and, like, I'll be busting up, but I see one story you put on TikTok the other day, that was just busting bare up. Bare people keep coming up to me about that story, but you know? Like, so for me, but this is what I keep coming back, when you say about legacy and doing the due diligence, of shaping the next generation coming through mm. because that's what it is. But every day is a learning day. So we got to keep putting that positivity because like we yeah, say, yeah. negativity for some reason travels so much more further Think than positive. Yeah. So we can put out, you can put an achievement and people would acknowledge it. And then people will put out some dumb story and it will get quadrupled mm. to flipping yeah. attention to that. Yeah. And you're like, yo, negativity like, goes. stop that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, negativity seems like it follows us. Bro, it's facts, yes, bro. It's, it's, I'll give you, thing. I'll give you an example. Yeah, people are so. just happy, innit? People so, are happy. For mis- misery loves company, innit? Yeah, yeah. No you know the reel I made when I was in the restaurant and walking around mm. the restaurant. It's crazy because I was like, "Hey, you just got the keys from a restaurant." It's crazy because I got the keys time ago, but because yeah, yeah. I just learned about TikTok and I was like, "So our social media guys on at the restaurant were like, hey, TikTok is booming or whatever." You know what I mean? Get involved in TikTok. So I was like, okay, I want to get involved in TikTok to boost. And it actually works because the followers for the restaurant just went, we're not open yet. They just went crazy that day. We mm. just got hundreds and hundreds of followers or whatever. Mm. So it, it then got picked up by Made You Think. So, you know, I shout out Made You Think. Yeah, yeah. Shout out Made You Think. He's posted it on his page. You know what I mean? I made the mistake of going through the comments. <laughs> See what man talking about. Shout out him. You know what I mean? But he could have done you better with the interior. Brother, I was looking at the restaurant. I was like, my nigga, we ain't even started the work. Us. Bro, I looked at it and I was like, brother, I was like, I posted the restaurant. How we, we've not, we know me at the box. So the refurb is going on now. I sat there and I was like, a man said he should have bought a Rolex. I was like, <laughs> what? You can't even do that. Bro, you, yeah. you can't even. You can't, the, can't, the people that you wouldn't take advice from, uh, in why there. would you allow Bro, them? Take the one that man will tell you. I usually don't. Read that shit. Taser will tell you, like, I'm that person that don't read, mm. you know what I mean, the comments of anything. It's not yeah, my thing. Yeah. That day, mm-hmm. got sucked in. And you know, when you go through it, bro, a man said he could have done... You know, when I sat there and some man was like, yeah, you know what I mean? Because, you know, made you think was like, it could be a big restaurant if my man does this, 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 and this. And someone was like, nah, it will never happen. Or whatever. And you know, I realised sometimes, you know, when you, you think, when you majesty. talk about negative thoughts... So it's easy sometimes to let thoughts that shouldn't get in your head get in your head, especially when you know what you're doing, mm-hmm. essentially. So I was sitting there and, you know what I mean, I let it rattle me a little bit, mm. but I sat there like, it took a while for me to think, but I know what I'm doing. Mm-hmm. When I sat there and I was like, when I looked at where my chef is coming from, I was like, mm. different. A man said to me, oh, he's doing, you know what I mean, I hope he's not doing wings and waffles and whatever, you know, that kind of talk. And I sat there and I was like, because as a black person, when you go and open a restaurant, there's a preconception about what you are doing. Essentially, everyone expects you to do either going to be African food, 
it's gonna be Afro Caribbean food, you know what I mean, or Caribbean food or whatever. Mm. There's this box that everyone has yeah, you in, yeah. where whatever you're gonna do is not gonna deviate from this. Mm. You know what I mean? So, so cool. So normal, every, yeah. you know what I mean. So the majority of the people in the comments were all talking within this little box. Mm. You had a few people that know me from when they speak, listen to the podcast and what I speak about. That's so outside of it, and for a little bit, I let it get to me. And it took a while for me to take a step back and I was like, I know what I'm doing. Mm. You know what I mean? And it's, 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 it's tough. Also, because I was like, you I can't, know. You can't, you can't listen to people. I ain't got no, time also, for that. Yeah, it but it's hard. You know what's it's hard is because I'm human. But, uh, what's interesting about that, that, we had that kind of experience when we was doing the documentary. Yeah, man. And like, with me and Dee, um, we kind of plotted it, planned it, planned it out and everything and kind of came up with a concept. But you know that like, when you're working in the industry and you've got people that have got years of experience, but you know your ability. Yeah. You tend to try and give them a chance. Yeah. And we, remember, we, we gave them that opportunity. And yeah. then you're like, and then we, we and looked at like, like, nah, nah, listen, we already plucked we this out. What, we, we know what you, needs and you, to be and done. And you know how you want it to look. You have to pull rank. Yeah. I'm not gonna and lie, we had I'm, to. I'm not going to lie to you. I'm going to lie to you. There's an interview that I watched the other day. Yeah. Do you not remember my man from Cool Runnings? Uh, the, the one with the dreads? Yeah. Didn't they all have dreads? No, nah, Sanka, man. Sanka, 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 the short dress. Oh, yeah, no, Sanka, Sanka, the funny one. Sanka, Sanka, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So he's, so he's, yeah, a, so, so he's yeah, a, he's a comedian, yeah, and he essentially was supposed to be the next Eddie Murphy mm-hmm. at the time, but there were certain opportunities that came his way, and he declined them because he was like, obviously, there's this stigma that a lot of actors in comedians, sorry, in America, that when they blow, they do this thing where they wear the dress. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. and he was like. It wasn't. It's, it's not even a thing where it's written in stone that in order to make it you got to wear a dress. Yeah, yeah. He said it's just some quirky executive mm. producer that thinks that, ooh, this might be cool. So they just rewrite the script and give it to you. And a lot mm. of managers be like, all right, cool. And he was like, nah, not for me. He mm. said that's why today he's not known as one of the famous comedians. Mm. He said, but I realized that the bag that I was getting was enough for me, and that's yeah, why I'm in the yeah. shadows. Mm. But ask any one of these uh, famous comedians; they all know who I am. Yeah. Yeah. And he said that was enough for me. My kids look; my kids can look at my career and be proud of me. They ain't got to worry about no one on the internet talking about. Yeah, oh, I remember when Daddy yeah, wore a dress, yeah. or remember when Daddy did this that he didn't want to do. And, and it was a proper interesting one because he was around at the time yeah, when all of this was happening. Yeah, 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 he said, yeah. "Eddie, you said it to me when we were speaking on the phone as well. Eddie Murphy was a superstar. Oh, no. I don't, on. I don't really, I don't know. Gone. He was gone. He was gone. He was different level." I didn't know how big Eddie Murphy was at the time. Nah, I didn't know. I didn't know. In a time. Yeah, in that time, he was gone. Yeah, just gone. He was out of time. now. Yeah, we is having this conversation about, so he was like, all right, cool. So if it was to ask modern day people now, what was more cultural changing? Rush Hour or Beverly Hills Cop? So if I ask you, man, what was for you? I think it depends on the age group though, isn't it? But I think, I know what you're saying though. Definitely Beverly Hills Cop would have been but I think Rush Hour was just like the film franchise. I don't think they think thought it was going to be that you popular. Know, if you look, go check it. Rush Hour was numbers do not come close yes. to Beverly Hills. Though, and I said the same because I said, "Oh, my kids love will Rush, watch Hour. Rush yeah. Hour." Yeah, yeah. So, and then the adults will watch Rush Hour. So you thinking, "Oh, in today's eight, yeah, this yeah, society." Yeah. Oh, it must have. It doesn't. No, Beverly no. Hills Cop yeah, revolution. Eddie Murphy ah, transcended. Yeah, 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 he trans- right. he transcended. Too, right. he but, so, and that's part. how of a superstar Eddie Murphy I was, was. I was saying right. to, we had a conversation. I was saying to Tay is like people don't know it. Like at that time, for example, you had um, people like is it Red Fox? You had um, Bill Richard, Cosby, Richard Pryor. Yeah, Richard, Richard Pryor. Pryor. Richard Pryor came just before, so Eddie kind of learned off Richard Pryor. Yeah, yeah, but Eddie took it to a next level where like Richard Pryor's jokes were like. You could see Richard Pryor was like a troubled soul. Like, although he was yeah, funny, yeah, 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 his, yeah, jo- his jokes were very dark yeah, sometimes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. he would laugh, but it's like, raw. Like, yeah, I'm supposed yeah, to laugh at this. Yeah. Like, yeah. you know, zigga, zigga, zigga. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I was there, zigga, zigga, early. Yeah. So, God damn, that nigga <laughs> might be smoking. <laughs> <laughs> but Ed, and remember, he had a lot and of problems with his private life yeah. as well. But when Eddie Murphy came out, it's like he fused, like, yeah, the jokes. Man. Remember, he could sing, he could act. He was a mad talented. So when he got to that level, he he hit Hollywood and didn't look back, bro. As yeah. in like actor Axel Foley, what yeah. coming to America? Coming to America, but he nailed even everything. He he tra- remember, remember trading places, trading places. Trading places. He cost brother. even. I remember, and you're saying, uh, I remember one um, interview he did in regards to Boomerang, and when they did the script and they did it, it was all black cast, and he said nobody was picking it up, and they, he was like, 
he couldn't understand. And it was like, because the script was written all black, none of them did drugs, and it was all in a positive, and yeah. they went. So they was like, nah, man, like, they're not. They, that, they wanted like a boys to hood yeah, on Men in Society. Yeah, they mm. that. And he was like, nah, man, look. And then they got the producer and the director, and they did it, and Boomerang's a cultural classic. Yeah. Mm. But, you, but you know the things, you know when you said, just said that, yeah? I've just thought about Boomerang. So Eddie Murphy, Martin Lawrence. Chris Rock. Chris Rock. Um, Robin Given. Halle Berry. Halle Berry. Yeah. Um, who else was in there? Um, Ain't thing in there. Um, Grace, Grace, Grace Jones in there. Jones Grace in there. Jones. Jones. Black, what that, I can't top? even... What's, what's the other comedian? The other comedian. The other third yeah. guy that was in there. I can't remember his name, but he's, he's a well, comedian as well. He's well, well respected. Yeah. Yeah. Chris, Rock, it Chris was, Rock in it. Yeah, Chris Rock. Yeah, Chris, yeah, Chris yeah. Rock was the, the yeah. Boomerang like, was a, a, a star studded yeah, cast, yeah. bro. Star, yeah. star, bro, remember, you know, bro. Same coming to America. Man, man, the one yeah. professor had um, Dave Chappelle in it. The old yeah. guy, yeah. Bernie Mac. No, not Bernie Mac. The other one. The oh, one from, um, the, 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 Witherspoon. Witherspoon. Yeah, yeah. Oh, 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 Pussy. Yeah. Remember the dinner party? He's like, Marcus, someone told me, you, come, you, you pussy. Yeah. You can't be pussy. Can I reverse that? You can't be pussy. Bang, yeah. bang, bang. Yeah. bang. 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 Ah. <laughs> Message yeah. from Marvin. Spell Versace. Fosachi. What? They don't make comedy. They don't make comedy like no more. Like now it's just, it's not that it's garbage. Message sugar. I can't say it's garbage, but like back in the them days, like when you watched something like a Friday, um, a coming to America, boomerang, bro. The comedy stayed with you for years. You, you can, you can. Twenty years later, you'll still be laughing about it, bro. Listen, I went for the process of. Making my kids watch that the house parties, the class, oh, yep. another one, bro. Because you know, they will never experience that, that. Because mm. that was, you know, the maddest thing is house party. We used to do house parties when because we were of there. Yeah. 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 it was that. Wait, who, was, was. who was it? Yeah, you that told me the other day. You watched some show on TV, yeah. and the reason why we used to do house parties was because yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So um, there's a program on um, Channel Four that's called uh, the '80s, the decade that changed the world, and episode two is about Black Britain. And a lot of black people weren't allowed to go raving. So so basically, whenever like, you know like Windrush and whatever, when black people yeah. came here, they were adults. But when they had kids here, their kids were experiencing mad racism, mm. as in like in school, getting spat at, getting mm. like, do you know what I'm saying? So when they got older, they wanted to rave. They wanted to, and then they'll go to raves or events and they'll be like, nah, not, you're not allowed in because yeah. you're black. So black, Irish, gay, those three, forget yeah. about it. You get me? So. Because of that, they were like, all right, cool, we'll do our own thing. So like Soul to Soul, people like that started to do these house parties where they used to have the big sound speakers, system. sound system. Yeah. And that's how like yeah. house, house parties started. Because yeah. yeah. before there was no such thing as house parties, yeah. but black people kind of had to realise we need to do something. So they started doing that. And even like songs, like as I said on the podcast before, Keep On Moving was made because they were kicked out of an art centre. So when they were kicked out, they were like, wrote a song, Keep On Moving, because they had to keep on moving to... Yeah. The, but, uh, it's, but black mm. people struggle, and the, yeah. the, the, how creative we are mm. is mad, bro. And then yeah. that's why an uh, Asian guy came to Channel 4 and started to believe in black people and their story, and that's why Desmond's mm. was yeah. made and Great. other Classic. things like that, because Classic. they wanted... Um, and if you, if you look at like, the stereotypes, we had positive stereotypes back in the day. Yeah. Like, yep. Desmond's was positive. Yeah. A mum, a dad... Bring up their kids Family. humbly, like do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, 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 you know what I'm saying? Bins, yeah, all of that. House part. I mean, even freshman to Bel Air, mm. same yeah, team. Yeah. Like, if you look at the whole, the whole TV then, it was Martin, like Cosby, yeah. Martin, like mm. hanging with Mr. Every, Cooper Cosby in the house. Cosby Show. It was very, it was very it's positive, bro. Different, different, different world, 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 wife and kids. Yeah, it's they're always trying to do the right thing. There wasn't, yeah. It wasn't like a mad message in all of them. Yeah. It was like they were trying to say, do you know what? Value people, family. respect people, yeah. family. Family important. was important in all though all the black shows we loved and enjoyed back in the day, they all taught us everything about family. Mm -hmm. There was mum and dad in the family. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? That dynamic they taught us. Now Marisha. Everything. Mm -hmm. everything. Now everything is all over the place. Sister sister. But those shows were very good in that showing was a us. Turn off, to be fair, Marisha, I remember seeing something, whereas they for years it was mum and dad. Yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? And then they wanted to change that. The, the dad. Last, yeah. The last season, they wanted to say that Ray J was his son. So then they wanted to put out the message that. That's in, that's in, 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 infidelity. Yeah. In that. And, and that. So. Because even the spin-off, um, the Parkers, we don't, we don't, we don't, we don't see yeah. Kim's dad. Yeah. When when he does come, he's some flat. He's he's basically Tommy from Martin. Okay. The same guy, 
But it's like when it first started, it was just mum and daughter. And it was like, I think that was when it was kind of like, all right, cool. They're trying to do this thing where it's That like was the first no time we had a black whatever with no dad. Because mm. we never used to see that. Like in black, the black shows, the black shows we grew up on had mum and dad. You, you know what I mean? But uh, the maddest thing is you didn't, you didn't see it. Nuclear because, family. Because now you're saying that that's the only time I've noticed that Parker didn't have a dad. Yeah. Mm. I've never noticed that before. I remember thinking about it. But for it, us, it was you, wholesome. You, you just told me, that, but all, in my mind, everything I saw was black family black family black, black unity and yeah. I, did, I didn't realize she was that always going and see you still had a positive black but she was going out there and doing her thing guy there mm. the head of the, the, head the, of the te- university the head teacher yeah yeah like just, Mr. Ogilvy yeah. you know Ogilvy yeah. 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 but you always yeah. trying to move to man isn't yeah. it yeah. Um, yeah. one on one move, man. even one on one single dad single flex yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, flex yeah. same thing he was always there so it wasn't no bummy parent we never ever watched a show where if it was a single parent my wife and kids bummy you know what I mean? So if it was two parents, Cosby's they were on job. If it was out. one parent, they were on job. Yeah, so yeah. we grew up on stuff like that. Now I feel like, what do we have? It's, it's just, they don't give the balance. Mm. They like, don't, if yeah. you're going to tell different stories, give us the balance. But now we have so nothing. But, but, I feel yeah. like, but I feel like in those days, I think, um, and I've said it on another podcast before, Matt Damon said about DVDs, and he was saying basically a long time ago, um, production houses. Production houses could commission, for example, they could make a film and not care how it's done in the cinema because mm. they'll make their money back on DVDs, DVDs yeah. sales. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they had I more. I saw that. The Matt Damon Wicked. Mm. So, so you had you had more money. For example, like Boomerang films like that will get commission because they're like, if we don't do well in the cinema, we'll get our money back on VHS, <laughs> yeah. DVD. The Take moment that it, the moment yeah. that, that stopped. A lot of places like held their purse like, mm, mm-hmm. because uh, we can't. If this flops in cinema, it flopped. In general, we lose money. Yeah. So I think that's what's happened now, that a lot of shows now won't get mm. their flowers or allowed to be commissioned because, so with, especially black people, you're going, only going to see stuff like that's Top Boy and stuff now. like that. So mm. I think it's moved. So I think he was talking, when he was talking about on the movie side of it, so you were seeing less of those, I didn't say positive because you knew if it didn't do well, people didn't go and see it. Yeah, they might buy a DVD. They'll get on a DVD yeah, on yeah. it to watch it. Whereas now... You, it's a streaming, so mm-hmm. now there's okay. so many different ways. You're paying yeah, subscription yeah. anyway, yeah, so, yeah. and they need content. So he was talking about the movie thing. So hopefully you now you'll start seeing a bit more positive portrayals again yeah. of you know what I'm saying? Because like I said, comes down and and if not, well, then us man got to do it. Us got to be continuing to to put on platforms where we control showing that. No, man, you can do anything. If you believe it, you can achieve it. Yeah, yeah. You understand what I'm saying? And that's just what I feel like we got to take on on the mantle of going forward and being like, no, nah, man, like, what, uh, uh, yeah, man, what, collectively. Uh, I was going to say, I'm looking at the time now. Yeah, so say, thanks yeah. for coming through, man. Nah, it's man, nice man. been, this bro, it's been a us, great man. conversation. Yeah. No, nah, this is dope, man. I can't lie. Like, we had an episode with Dwayne Chambers and that episode was sick. Mm. And I think this is online so with there. that. Yeah, in terms it's definitely of, on par. Because I feel like Dwayne Chambers had a sick story, as in, Rags, I mean, rags to riches to rags to riches again. And I feel like you've not got, not got like a similar story in terms of rags to riches, in terms of what he done, but, but, certain but, honesty. You've, but you've definitely got a, an honesty and yeah, also yeah. your career, like it's kind of like an Ian Wright story or like a Vardy story that like, you didn't get the conventional route to football. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, it wasn't yeah, like, yeah. it was later on. And then once you got the opportunity, you seized it and you're here today. And even you're telling people, your story, as in, like, yeah, it weren't easy. Like, boy, I had, I had a mad ups and downs, but do I'm know, here, though. But do you know the reason what I'd, I'll always say, and, and again, and I said this initially about if you strip it away, but for me, the story is, it's all the same. Like, but you lot didn't have it easy. Yeah, but yeah. Mums don't have it easy. Dads don't have it easy. Teachers don't have it easy. Mm-hmm. Like, when you want to achieve something, but it's rare. Anybody that's acquired something that they've wanted... They've struggled. Ha- they've had to struggle mm-hmm. for it. Mm-hmm. So, for me, my thing is, I'm saying, no, nah, man, look, brother, I'm transparent in the, in, in the sense. And I, I, I'll always say, but I don't yearn or, and I don't need the love. I don't want the hate. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? But mm-hmm. I don't need the love. Yeah, and yeah. at the same this day is, you be careful who you have around you. So it's my inner circle that, but if they say something like, yo B, you're falling off, I know I'm falling off. Yeah, you know yeah, what I'm yeah. saying? That's what it's, but if somebody on the internet says, you're shit, I'm like, all right, boy, cool man. Yeah, I don't care. You know what I'm saying? I don't, I don't really care. And mm. that's the fact of when, when I speak, for me, I, I'll always say is, but as long as they get this authenticity from me in the sense where 
Fam, it don't matter, good, bad, or different. I am going to be me. That's how mm-hmm. I feel towards the podcast. Like, yeah. It's conversations like this that I want to yes. have. I don't, yes. I don't care about the views or yes. all that stuff. For yeah, me, yeah, I can have man. conversations like this. Yeah. Yes. If this can mm-hmm. come out, like when I, when I, when I initially said, "Ah." Oh, Episode come out and it gets like 250 views. I didn't mean it as in, oh, we're not doing well. I just meant like, if only 250 want to lock in and watch and take in this, I'm cool. No, so you, know, you say that right it's, now, it's, it's not it's, what you meant there. Like, you mean that now. No, I'm just not what you meant there. It's like, it's like, when when it's like, it's like, no, 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 no. At the time, man didn't have confidence in the team. What's talking about? Man all kinds of fancy shit to say now. Everyone. We have confidence in the team. When I say this to him, I'm like, look, Boom. They're just like, nah, man. Look, bam. As long as what we're saying is authentic to us, mm. those that gravitate to it will gravitate yeah, to it. Yeah, if they yeah, don't, really. if those yeah. that don't, that don't. But again, it's easy to say that when it's not your livelihood. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, your time. Well, you know what I'm saying. It's even so your livelihood. It's like that's us being honest, like, isn't it? Yeah, that's us being so honest. So Chase can say all this shit now after doing Royal Albert Hall, but when he said that. Come shit, on. At the beginning. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Um, yeah. Shout out to obviously shout out to everyone who's uh, been following our journey for the past like six and a bit years. Today's the day we recorded this on Tuesday. You lot are hearing this on Friday, but today's the day that we done Royal Albert Hall last year. No, a year, a year from today is when we done Royal Albert Hall last year. Yeah. 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 Thanks for the invite. Man, man, thanks for the invite. Nah, definitely. Do you know what it is? Remember, you are locked in now anyway. So like, anything, anything, anything we do, I like, always let you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Come on, there, man. But my like, worst thing is, I'll be seeing from, I, I, of course, I think you man are c- c- certified in the culture. So, man, be seeing it. Like, mm. I'll be seeing what y'all man doing. I'll be seeing the growth. And these man are constant. Like, yo, man. My free shots of tequila and them, man. There, I was like, my first one, yo, that's my boy name and them things, man. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, I say nothing, and it's just there.